Welcome. I built this kit two years ago, and I've been waiting for the right diorama to put it in, but I'm finally ready. Let's start with a cardboard box. I want to do a coastal cliffside that can change from day to night with trees and fireflies. It needs to be tall enough for full-size trees. It's a bit cramped. Just a bit. We're gonna need a bigger box. Ooh, wood. I have some rigid insulation foam here that I'll be carving into a rocky cliffside. I'm cutting some parallel score marks that I can press into to make cracks and crevices. It's already looking rock-like. Let's make a hollow frame out of cardboard and hot glue. We'll need this space for lights later. Now for the terrain. I'm mixing some gravel, sand, and Spanish moss with our main ingredient, plaster, and some acrylic, so I won't need to paint it later. I use some cardboard to elevate the back of the diorama. Now we can finish building the cliff. I'm building this side with leftover scraps and using smaller pieces to create a jagged edge and cover the seams. Let's break up that straight line with some blocks and fill in the gaps with sculpta mold. Now I'll mix up a coat of gesso. We have our cliffs in place. Now we need to find some tree material. We need driftwood for two things, miniature trees and miniature driftwood. The driftwood we need for driftwood should be shaped like these big logs, but miniature. Oh, that was miniature. Oh, that's a good candidate. What is going on here? Oh, what's that? I think we found our tree's trunk. Ooh, look at that. This is like an entire tree. And I almost missed it. What is blowing those bubbles? Look at these raccoon tracks. Pretty big bird. These need to be cleaned. And baked. Okay, let's see what we can do here. This and that. Maybe like that. This one looks like a T-Rex arm. Or Lythronex. Hmm. This would be a nice driftwood log. Put our guy right there. using this and maybe one more limb like that okay now I need a conifer no nope. these two that works I'm breaking out the sculpta mold again this time to make some tree mush Sculpta molds like a mixture of paper and plaster. Spread that oatmeal in there. I think this will add a nice bark texture too.
we've got some trunks. Now for some branches. I'm using floral wire and aluminum armature wire. And I'm gluing those in place with baking soda and super glue, which creates a strong bond. Forget it, forget it! Hmm, that's not bad. More floral wire for the next tree. Now for some real branches to fill out the wire ones. Some gel type super glue to hold these in place. Next, I'm gonna use some modeling paste to blend everything together. Modeling paste is used by painters to create a thick, three-dimensional texture. I'm going to use it to coat the wires and cover any seams. Not too bad. Now we can paint it. I'm using acrylic and a little water. Some white dry brushing. You probably know that combining yellow and blue will make green, but did you know yellow and black also makes green? At least the green we need. I'm switching to dark brown in the shaded areas. For the next tree, I'm going to use green, black and magenta, and orange. Our trees have bark, now they need moss. I'm using some Woodland Scenics Turf. This is a sponge-like material. I'm wetting it down with some alcohol and gluing it in place with some watered-down Mod Podge. This squirter is not working. Next up, we're going to need some leaves. I traced over some beech leaves and grew those into branches. I'm using real life plants to select the paper color. I decided I should let my laser do most of the work. Later on in the video, I'll show you how to make paper leaves without slave laser labor. I made two designs to mix together. It even got the leaf ridges. Acrylic paint can work great as watercolors. I decided to have the leaves change in color because it's pretty and I can get away with a sparser look. Now I need to paint the branches on both sides. Now a little folding to make these less flat. Do that a couple times. Couple hundred times. Let's apply these leaves. Perfect. Let's go check on our other tree. For this tree's foliage, I'm going straight to nature, or Etsy, to get meticulously preserved asparagus fern. Now I could have done this myself with glycerin, but I didn't want to buy a whole plant. This is when I ordered super glue accelerator, but it didn't come. I happened to find these flat roots growing on the sidewalk. They look an awful lot like dead branches. Trees finished. 
This is how I planned to place the trees. But after adding the beech leaves, they no longer fit next to each other. So the conifer had to slide back. Now the lithronax has even less room. For this to work, I'm going to have to open up. Like that. I didn't want to paint that wall anyways. But I do need to paint this cliff. Right now it's a cold gray. So I'll need some warm neutral tones. Golden yellows. Sandy beiges. Muddy brown. And dark pale green. You can see the dry brushing still visible here, but now it's tinted the same color as the surrounding area. The colors are looking very natural. Now let's add some dark washes. This will bring out all those cracks and crevices. Painting complete. Now let's fill this space. We've got a few pieces of driftwood to choose from. When I was at the river, I noticed sticks sticking out of the sand. Better include that. I haven't found the right composition yet. Let's try a few other variations. This wood's a little too dark. It probably needed more time to drift. We'll just have to paint it. Now for some freshly baked river sand. I'm going to use Mod Podge where I want the sand. Gotta bury the back of that log. This is a very matte finish. A glossy finish would make the sand look too dark. I used some modeling paste to build up this area where the tree used to go. And I was going to put sand over it, but it looks like natural clay, so I'm going to keep it visible. Now I'm going to fill this dry puddle with UV resin. The advantage of UV resin over epoxy is that instead of mixing it and having cure times, I can cure it whenever I want with UV light. The surface hardens first, and a full cure takes about 4 minutes. I made this in two layers to make it easier for the light to penetrate. Looking at UV light is bad for your eyes, but I found out my laser goggles make it completely invisible. After using this resin, I reached out to Let's Resin to see if they wanted to sponsor the video. And they agreed to do a giveaway. Two starter kits that come with a folding UV light. Reply to the pinned comment below to be entered. Or click the Amazon link and get 10% off with code Kayakosaurus. Now let's add some life to the scene, starting with the cliffs. I've expanded my turf color palette with yellow grass in the flat rocky areas. Earth in the more shaded areas, burnt grass where rainwater might collect, and light green up top where soil would be. My spray bottle is officially dead, so I'm switching to a paintbrush, which actually isn't that bad. Now that the terrain is set, we can plant our tree. with some gray plaster to cement them in place. I'm adding some brown to prepare for the ground cover. We can make that out of dried leaves. I'm using real life dead leaves that I found on the ground. Leaf punches are also a serviceable alternative to a laser cutter. I use this punch to make a magnolia tree.
Let's set those aside and use the scraps as our first ground cover ingredient. With sand, turf, Spanish moss, and Dollar Tree moss. A healthy helping of this will make the ground just as messy as it is outside. I need a new spray bottle. This twine is made from natural sisal fibers that I harvested myself. Anyways, let's trim these to size. One dunk in clear acrylic, or Mod Podge or whatever, and small knock leaves. And I'll glue those together to make a fuller bush. This is the look I'm going for. Our second plant is going to be a fern. This is my first time using paper ferns. It's hard to beat this level of detail, but they do take some time to make. I'm gonna bend them along the center of the frond and then use a unique type of round pliers to curve the sides. And a second layer for a fuller fern. I stuck these in place with more hot glue. Remember these leaves from earlier? It's time to place them. It's looking pretty good, but there's this blank wall up here. I'm gonna make a quick tree line facade. It's not gonna be very visible, just enough so it's not a blank space. The super glue accelerator finally showed up. I thought I was finished with the trees, but then I realized this green is just not the right green. So I took it outside to airbrush. Much better. Now the landscape's complete, but the background's empty. We need ambient lighting. I cut a hole in the right spot on the first try. Now I need to fill it with something that will let light pass through. UV resin. I need this to work both as a daytime sky and a nighttime sky. So I went with dark clouds. This is my first painting with an airbrush, but I figure clouds should be pretty forgiving. I happen to have a scrap of 12 volt LED strip, which is just what I need. Okay, let's see if it works. Yes! I bought another lighting kit that I used in a previous diorama, so I could combine it with the leftover light and dimmer switch. I also purchased splitter and pigtail cables. Now I need to tint half of these lights blue. I tried transparent paint and sharpie ink, but I wasn't happy with either of those results. I needed something clear. Then I ordered some navy blue vinyl. I think we found it. Now I need a way to transition from day to night. I went on Tinkercad to design some sun and moon themed knobs. Print those out. Now I can use these on the dimmer switches.
I designed some barrels for the knobs to neatly plug into. Paint those with glossy black and gunmetal gray. Carve out a cutout. And that's the drawer. But how can we add a fossilized firefly effect? Let's start with fairy lights and fiber optic cable, which when momentarily lit up, should look like a firefly. I cut strands into groups of several lengths. But the problem with these lights is there's no easy way to attach them, especially in groups. We need to find a new light to try. Here's some blinking LED lights that might work. These are pre-wired and they're rated for 12 volts. Now I can use heat shrink to make a tidy tube that I can slide the fibers right into. I think this is gonna work. Let's swing around back and send in the fireflies. I'm adding in some extra branches to cover up the cable. On the other end, I need to evenly divide each of these bundles into four new groups, one for each LED. This way the blinking will be evenly distributed across the diorama, to make sure a group of fireflies don't all flash at the same time. So far I've gotten away without doing any soldering, but I can't completely avoid it. I'm putting the iron on one side of the wires, and the solder on the other side. This is what heat shrink's actually made for. Now we can attach the LEDs to the fibers. All of that mess gets hidden away in here and the moon gets wired into the same circuit. That, with the ceiling, completes the lighting effects. Now there's only one thing left. Our dinosaur, Lythronax. Also known as, not a T-Rex but might as well be. You can find the sculptor slash model maker on Instagram. This, is a Borneo Anglehead Lizard. I'll be copying its colors, starting with a Vallejo skin tone called Dwarf Skin, and then a yellow, black, and brown mixture for the leg and the arm. For the back, I mixed in light livery green. Those are the base colors, and because I'm not that confident with an airbrush, I'm gonna switch to a paintbrush for the line work. Let's add some stripes and spots. Back to the airbrush for the light spots inside the lines. Now I'm going to make this look way better with some terracotta red mixed with clear for a transparent effect. 
This way I can add color over the pattern while keeping it visible. The tail and throat will get the same red fade, whereas the arms and legs get Createx transparent yellow. Now for the eyes, which are all black, with a ring around the pupil. Now we need a hole to mount him to the base. The resin got so hot it became rubbery. One last unnecessary final touch for the full effect. Big thank you to my patrons for supporting the channel while I made this video. See you in the next one.